Welcome back to another CBB talk with your boy Will Dignington, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up real quick because I got a fire fit on today. Your boy's got the onesie. Your boy's got a onesie on. It's Christmas time. Who gives a crap anymore, man? I just don't care anymore. So let's go. Let's do it. I'm wearing a onesie, recording a podcast because guess what? I can do whatever the hell I want. Um, we had a new team enter the top ten. Because one team fell out this um after last night, and a new team has entered the top twenty five, while another team dropped. One sec, I need to pause this recording, but it won't. It will be a second for you. It will be like a minute for me. All right, sorry, I'm back. And yeah, one team fell out of the top tw- top ten, and a new team entered the top twenty five. While one team fell out, I think we know who that one team is. Let's just say they have a poor offense. Let's get into it. So Monday really brought absolutely nothing um to the college basketball scene. But last night did. So let's get started. Let's talk about the first really big result of the night. It was Memphis destroying Virginia at home. I moved Memphis to number 10 in the country. I'm really impressed with the way they've played. Um, their losses are to Villanova and Ole Miss, which Ole Miss, maybe maybe I should move Ole Miss up from 24 because they have beat Memphis. But the way Memphis is playing recently has been impressive. They haven't played a lot of home games. They've now had two in a row, and they've gotten two big wins over Clemson and Virginia. Penny Hardaway has an experienced, really good team there. David Jones, again, showing why he might be the American Player of the Year front runner at this point with 26 points, Javon Quinterly, a nice nine, Malcolm Dandridge, nine, Kayla Mills, 13 off the bench. I'm watching this game, and Virginia just couldn't put the ball in the basket. This team lacks a lot of um, people that can create their own shot. They're really relying on a Reese Beekman, who is an amazing defender, but he's not really a first-option guy there. Ryan Dunn has a lot of potential in defense end, but he still kind of looks lost in the offense end. A good double-double from him. McNeely struggled to shoot the three. Um, and that was really the key for Virginia. You have to have McNeely hit threes. I'm Virginia out of my top 25. They had a decent resume, but now not really. I moved in Providence. We can talk about Providence in a little bit. Oh uh, yeah. Memphis is a super good team. Look, nine and two. I think they're the best team in the American. I had to move them over FAU. They're number 10 in the country. They got wins against Arkansas. They have a road win against Missouri, a win against Michigan, which is not great. And then they did lose two. They lost to Villanova in the Battle for Atlantis Championship and then at Ole Miss by three. But since then, they went on the road against VCU win, on the road against Texas A&M win, home win against Clemson, home win against Virginia. That's a tough four-game stretch. They do it, and I don't think they'll lose a game for a while at this rate. They go Vanderbilt at home on Saturday. That should be a win. And Austin P. Tulsa, SMU, UTSA, at Wichita State could be a tough one. But then South Florida at Tulane, at UAB. They don't play FAU until February 25th. So Memphis can go on a serious, serious run here. Um, And watch out for the Tigers. I think this is Penny Hardaway's best team. I thought they had a really good team last year and ended up losing the FAU in the tournament. But now they're in the same conference. 10th in the country for Memphis. And they could only go up because they look like they have a super friendly schedule coming up. Um, yeah, and then that, and then we had yeah, a couple teams go down, but yeah, Memphis goes up to number ten in the country. Um, shout out to Memphis, looking very very good. That was the first big result of the night. Um, and then the second big result of the night was Providence taking down Marquette. Um, in the first Big East battle. Real good Big East battle of the season. Shout out to the Friars. They ended up winning by 15. Um, It was close in the beginning of that first half, but Providence um, pulled away. And to start that game, it was really sloppy. It was a lot of unnecessary threes. They tried it. They were, it was a lot of running up and down the court and missing shots there. Tyler Kulik off to a real start, a good start, and he kept that going. But we saw that... um, we did see injury, some injuries with Ross. I think he came back in the game. And no Stevie Mitchell in this one um, from Marquette. He's missed the last three games. And I think that showed with some lack of depth there, the guards. But Providence is a real good team. Kim English in his first year, I think, put together a tournament-caliber team. 
um, a team that can compete in the Big East. Uh, Dev Carter was amazing, 22 and 8 in this one. Um, Gaines really hit some threes, um, five of them. Him and Carter both combined for five threes. The rest of the team only had one. Um, but Providence is not scared at the moment. They shot shots. The dunk was absolutely amazing environment last night and it showed Bryce Hopkins I still think is their best player did struggle a little bit in this one 11 and 9 for them they don't have a great big but the thing about Marquette is they don't either Iguagardo is a very good player but he's not going to be able to dominate games Kulik was really good 21 9 and 5 but Marquette really struggled most of this game hitting shots um, and they had a lot of turnovers and Marquette and Providence capitalized off that and played a really, really good defense, played a good game. And what a start to the Kim English era right there in Providence. 10 and 2. I moved Marquette down to number 12. Um, I still really like this team, but that is their third loss of the year. They've lost games now to Kansas. No, no, they lost games to Bailey lost a game to Purdue. They lost a game to Wisconsin. And now they've lost this game to Providence. So they start out Big East play 0 and 1. Province starts out 1-0. I moved them up to 19th in the country there. Province has a pretty good resume. They're 10-2. and I like the way this team is playing. They got a win against Wisconsin um, that was at home. They got a OT loss to Kansas State and a loss to, at Oklahoma. Um, and, yeah, Oklahoma's a very, very good team. Um, that's I got Oklahoma 14th in the nation there. Maybe I'm a little low on them. Um but, yeah, really good win there for the Friars. I'm not too concerned about Marquette. It's tough to win road games in the Big East there, and I'm excited for Big East play because there's a lot, a lot of good teams in this conference. Um, Creighton, Marquette, UConn, of course. Villanova is still a good team. Now we see Providence emerging. St. John's, I think, is a decent team. Butler's looking good. This conference is going to be super competitive this year um, if you're not named DePaul. Um, it's it's just a true statement. Xavier's not that good, or Xavier. I said Xavier, whatever. Whatever you want to call it, I honestly don't care. So yeah, Xavier's not that good this year. Um, but besides that, it's gonna be a very stacked conference. I'm excited to see how it plays out because night in, night out, you're going to get really good games. It's just gonna be like that. And the Big 12 always delivering good games. Some other results is Notre Dame lost to Citadel. I mean, that's just a big upset. They got beat by 20 at home to Citadel. So yeah. Tough loss there. Um, Indiana survives a good Moorhead State team by one um, after being now 11 and a half. So shout to Indiana for coming back, but still not a great one there. Oh, Georgetown's not too good either because Butler beat Georgetown by 10 at home there. Um, so far, Butler doesn't look like they're a bad team. Maybe they can be a tournament this team, team this year. Um, it's been a while. JMU remains undefeated there with a about a 39 point win against Compton State. My boy TJ Bickerstaff, the feaster with another big game. Um, he's looking to win. Um, he's looking to win some belt player of the year. Him or TJ Edwards should be the favorite there. Florida beat Michigan in that um and the Jordan games by five in double OT. So a very good game there. Florida is a tournament caliber team there. Michigan's not. They're six and six. I remember I had Michigan ranked at one point this year because they were three and zero with some good wins. They've struggled recently. Once they went to Atlanta, they really have taken a step back there. And Michigan, yeah, rough year for Michigan. Juwan Howard is back coaching. No, Ole Miss also remains undefeated with a nice uh, twenty-one point win over Troy. Uh, Matthew Morrell was good. Musa Cisse injured. We'll see how bad of an injury that is. Um, Indiana State with another go in. They're eleven and one. Um, they're really high in the net rankings. USC, Bronny James with another game under his belt. He had, I believe, six points in that one. Um, USC finally gets a win with him playing. And let's see, anything else that was very, Drake with another win. I think Drake's very good. Them and Indian State should be a great battle in the Missouri Valley this year. I think those are two very good teams. And maybe Missouri Valley can get, you know, two teams in the tournament. But let's talk about the next two days because we have some good games today. And I'm actually not sure about Thursday, but I'm sure there's going to be one or two good ones there. But I know Wednesday today there's some more good games of note. As I'm waiting for this thing to load because I don't know what's going on. We can talk about um, what do we want to talk about. NFL. 
Um, yeah, NFL's been it's been good. Um, only three more weeks left. Fantasy semifinals. I'm in one of them. I made a semifinal. Uh, got a tough matchup for me this week in one of my playoff matches. But um, besides that, yeah. Um, four niners look like the best team. Four niners Ravens on Christmas should be amazing. I'm gonna try to do a Christmas special maybe Friday. A little bit of a Christmas special. I mean, I'm already wearing a onesie. I don't know much more I can what more I can do, but we'll try to do something different. Um, because yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, Christmas on Monday is just kind of weird though. I don't really like it. But let's talk about some games on Wednesday, seven o'clock. Duke going against Baylor. This is in MSG in New York, so neutral game there. Um, Duke Baylor should be in a really, really good game there. We got Duke minus three Baylor coming off a bad loss against Michigan State. Got absolutely butt raped in that one. Um, I'm sure Duke's gonna have more fans there. Um, I got Baylor ranked 18th in the nation. I got uh, Duke 20. So by my logic, Baylor should be favored in this one. Um, so freak it, man. I'm gonna put Baylor plus three would be my bet, but. I think Duke, you know, Duke's looking for an, another a good signature win. They're lacking one this year. Their best win is against Michigan State there. They've lost three games. They lost to Georgia Tech. They have lost um who has Duke lost to? Arizona, Georgia Tech. And who was their third loss to? I mean, I'm assuming it was someone good. At Arkansas. You're right. At, not really. Not really good. Um so far, another neutral side game for the Blue Devils here. I think Duke should be able to win this one there. I'm not sure if Tyrese Proctor will be back, but they need him to be back. Of course, Jacoby Walter, the star over there for Baylor. Baylor kind of went, had a tough opening game against Auburn, but since then they've had a coast schedule, and then they played a tough one against Michigan State and got destroyed. So I'm not sure how good this Baylor team really is, um, and they are trying not to lose back-to-back. I think Duke should, again, they play M- MSG. They've been there more than Baylor. Um, but this is going to be a super, super good one on ESPN. We have three great games on ESPN tonight. This is the first one of them. Give me give me Baylor, though. I think Baylor's going to keep it close, and I think they can definitely win this game. Um, I do have them ranked higher in a neutral game, so that should say Baylor, but I think Baylor keeps it close, but Duke wins maybe by a point or two. Um, this three line is going to be really, really tough to bet um, for either side there. UConn is at Seton Hall. Um, Seton Hall is not too good this year. But UConn, a road game, we'll see how they ma- uh, manage there. Uh, again, not easy to play road games in the Big East whatsoever there. tough. It's going to be a tough one for UConn. Expect them to pull that one out, though, um, The way that since the way they've been playing there. Another good Big East game at 9 is Villanova at Creighton. Look, Villanova's lost some weird games this year, but they've also won some big games this year. Um and they're going at Creighton, not an easy place to play. Creighton just had a nice home win against Alabama on Saturday. Now they're hosting a good Villanova team. But I, they're minus nine. It's a big number for me. I think Villanova is going to keep this one close. Um, but I think the home court advantage, I think Creighton will will pull it out. And the Blue Jays will get a nice win and start their Big East play 1-0. That's a very good one. 9 o'clock ESPN, probably the game of the night there. We have North Carolina and Oklahoma in Charlotte. Big time game here between two um good teams this year. We have one of the undefeated teams in the country, um, Oklahoma, the ranked number seven in the poll. I have them 14th, a little lower, but they have some good wins. Of course, that win um over Mem- they Memphis. Who did they beat? I was just talking about who Oklahoma beat this year. Providence. They have a good win over Providence. Um, but I'm not sure. North I mean, obviously North Carolina is gonna have more fans there. This is in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. I mean, you're going to see it's going to be like 80% North Carolina fans there. It should be a good game. Um, we got North Carolina minus three. They're trying not to drop three in a row. North Carolina's now lost some games in a row. They're still ranked 11. I think that's a little high for UNC. Well, I got them 16th, I believe. Yeah, I got them 16th. This is going to be a good game. Whoever wins this game is definitely going to move up. If Oklahoma wins this, I'm going to finally put respect on the name and move them up high. But this is a tough place to go in and play. Um, Obviously, UNC has the more star p- power, and Oklahoma has a lot of under the radar guys, but I think Oklahoma can keep this close there. I'm just not sure how legit they are of a team. Give me North Carolina in Charlotte. Going to have the home court advantage pretty much there, um, but should be a really, really good one there and definitely one you need to watch. There's a lot of good games on the day, but this is the game of the day. Oklahoma versus North Carolina. Neutral site game there. Oklahoma trying to remain one of the four undefeated teams. If not, there will only be three. 
And the last good game is another ESPN one. This is all Alabama going against Arizona. This is in Phoenix. So not a home game for the Wildcats, but pretty much a home game. Alabama, Alabama's a good team, but they are not winning games. They're just not winning games. You get you you at some point you can be a good team, but you gotta start winning games. And this is another tough game. They've Alabama's played a tough schedule. I I will say they've played a tough schedule. Shout out the NATOs for scheduling that way. But they got to start pulling off a win here. Arizona's got another. Um, they got some, they got a tough little schedule ahead of them there. Um, this is a this is a big one. This is the middle of their th- tough three game stretch. I think Arizona's gonna win this one. Um, again, they're gonna pretty much have the home court advantage. They're seven point favorites, which is a good amount. I think Arizona's gonna blow them out. I do. Um, I love this Arizona team. They played a tough Purdue team pretty much on the road there, and now they get pretty much a home game. I like. The Wildcats in this one, but man, there's some good games on today. Um, the ESPN triple slot should be good. Turning at seven for Baylor Duke. Then you got Oklahoma UNC and finishing off with Alabama, Arizona. Those are three good games with some good so about five really good games tonight to look out for. Um, which is always fun. And Thursday, I'm actually not sure about Thursday. I have not looked at the Thursday slate. I'm gonna be honest, I was slacking. I looked at the Wednesday slate and knew it was good. I did not look at the Thursday slate, so I'm, br- I'm blindly looking at this. Wow, really good one here, guys. Really good game. Kentucky at Louisville. Could be close. Could be close. I expect the line to be 20. I expect the line to be 20 there. Um, I bet there's more Kentucky fans than Louis- Louisville fans in that game. That one's at 6 on Thursday. It's an earlier tip there. Um, yeah, there's really not many good games on the Gs. I'm looking. I'm like... Trash, 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 a lot of trash, a lot of trash, a lot of trash, more trash, super trash, oh my trash, wow. Yeah, that's, there's nothing on Thursday. There is nothing on Thursday. Man, what the hell? All right, well, we'll be back on when, on Friday for a little bit of a Christmas special. I'm going to give you my Christmas wishes for the college basketball season. The naughty, the nice, the presents. I don't know what I'm going to do, but we'll do something fun. Um, I'm excited for Christmas, but we got another episode before then. So go watch the College Basketball Night. Five good games to look out for, but the tri- ESPN triple header should be spectacular to watch there. Um, yeah, big changes in the top 25. Memphis in the top 10. Providence in. Virginia out. Peace out. Love you guys.